Welcome back to our healthy home. So today I'm going to show you how to make Opo Panix infused oil. So you probably already see my video on frankincense, how to make frankincense infused oil, but this method is going to be 120 times better than that and easier. And then I also have another video showing the benefits of frankincense, opal panics, and myrrh. I did a compare and contrast. So if you don't know which resin you want to use first, if you want to just choose one, you can find the best one for you in watching that video. So I'll have those videos linked down below along with the products that you'll need to make this. So I'm just going to have an oil of choice, opal panics, the resin. You want to have it in its whole form. You can do it with a powder as well. I like to have it and then crush it up on my own because it's just fresher. It's gonna have much more potency and much more of a stronger smell because you don't know how fresh a powder is. But whatever you have, you can go ahead and use that. And then I'm gonna use a crock pot. So I'm gonna use a crock pot for this, but you can also do it on the stove. If you do it on the stove, you wanna have like a shallow pot, about an inch of water, you wanna put right inside of it so that it fits, no air escapes or no steam escapes. And you wanna have that stainless steel mixing bowl and then you put the oil in, you put it on low, you don't wanna have it hot and gonna burn the oil or lose the nutrients out of it. But you just wanna do it slowly. We're gonna do this eight hours overnight is even better just so that it can infuse and get everything out. So this is gonna be a whole lot easier because we're not gonna have to worry about these huge chunks because Opal Panics, the chunks that I have of it are pretty large. It smells really good. I love it as compared to the frankincense and myrrh. This is sweet myrrh and it has a sweeter smell but it almost has like a, like a citrus or brighter note to it that is just so fresh and clean and I really love it. So we're gonna put these huge chunks in here. Whenever you're making an infused oil, it's usually about a one to five. Resins, you know, they're really oily, has lots of wonderful essential oils. Some of my chunks are a little smaller. Just gonna add them in to about a one to five ratio. I don't need to do more because it really makes a strong and potent medicine and it lets it go further. So this would be for like a massage oil. You can use this on your face as opposed to using the essential oil. And actually buying your own will go longer. It's gonna be an infused oil. It's not gonna be essential oil. So it's not gonna be as strong. You can also take this infused oil and then use that in perfumes. So you can use this in facial creams, moisturizers as a massage oil. So. It really does go far. And this little package just cost me $10 for organic. And this is from Ethiopia. This is wild crafted in Ethiopia. And so when you're getting these resins, typically you want to get it from Ethiopia or Somalia, someplace like that. Okay. So I have this here. I'm going to put a little bit more in here. But I'm just eyeballing it. About a one to five ratio if you want to actually measure it out and make sure you get it perfect. And it looks like, you know, there's not much in there. But the oil is going to be nice and fragrant. And then you have more to make again. This package has about four ounces in it. And I use about half of it. And this is a 16 ounce. So I could have used more, but I really don't need to. And actually in here, I'm going to open it up. I just finished making some more frankincense infused oil. And I use the rest of my frankincense. And this method changed up a little bit. I'm just using this just to get it out because it, it is hot. Even though you're keeping it on keep warm. And don't want to drop it. All right. I'm moving this one out to let it cool down before I bottle it up. So the oil. So the oil. I like to use grapeseed oil. Why? Because you can find a pretty good quality grapeseed oil at your local grocery store, whereas another oil like a sunflower oil, I probably only buy it from a reputable company that I can find and source online or maybe in a health food store. I also like it because it is relatively inexpensive as opposed to some other oils. Like I said, the sunflower oil is much more expensive. I also like that this is very light. And so it really absorbs into the skin very well. So if you have oily skin, I think that this is a really good choice as well. It won't, you know, leave you feeling heavy or greasy. But if you are using this for a massage oil and you have drier skin, you can go with a thicker oil, maybe like a sweet almond oil. 
So I'm just going to fill it up to here. I'm going to put it into my crock pot and I'm just going to put it on a keep warm setting and it's going to be eight hours. So for me, I don't know to just turn it off like if I start at eight o'clock, turn it off at four o'clock, you know, nine to five, like that eight hour period at least. But in between there, this is how the process is changing just slightly. One, they said that you did not, that you don't want to cover it. You just put this on top. I find that that doesn't make sense to me. If I want any of the gases to escape, what I can do is I can sit it about 80% over the jar, even 90%. I just leave a little crack for some of it to escape. But the thing is, I don't really want it to escape. We want to keep the essential oils in. We don't want them to evaporate. And so I don't see why you actually wouldn't close it. So from the method that I've seen and used before, from doing it on my own, I'm going to cover it. And what I'm going to do is about six hours in, or maybe about four hours in, it's going to be nice and warm. And the resins just kind of soak up the oil and soften. And so what I did was I just went and crushed it warm. And I just used a butter knife to do this. And the butter knife actually was able to break them up into smaller pieces, like into halves and all of that. And so you're just going to release even more nutrients out of it. By the time you're done with this, if you do it overnight, you'll know that it's really like gummy and broken down and it looks kind of like a thick sap. And so that's how you know that you've gotten everything that you want out of it. So I'm going to show the process just of what it looks like of me crushing it up after about six hours. I'll show you how I strain it off and this is 16 ounces so this is going to be more than enough I'm going to be sharing it with my mother but I'm going to show you what it looks like and just so you can make sure you're doing the process right but all I would do now is I have it actually covered I said you could do about 95 percent but I'm just going to cover it up just because of what I know about essential oils so that's why you just always have to be cautious too of what you learn on the internet but when you want things for their essential oils that's the main medicinal properties are in the essential oils so you want to cover it you want to keep it in there you don't want them to escape and evaporate out so we want to keep that in so i'm putting the lid all the way on i'm putting it on keep warm don't put it higher than that and it will take time to heat up as you know slow cookers do you can also do this on your simmer setting on the stove. You're just going to want to monitor it and you're going to want to cover that. So to cover it, you can just use a kitchen towel. Um, just make sure it doesn't get on the stove, especially if you have a gas stove. So I'm just going to be moving this over to my counter and I'll show you guys the rest of the process. We'll come back. We'll talk. All right. Okay. So once the process is finished, this is my frankincense oil, which is about finished. I'm going to go ahead and hold it up for you to see. If you can see at the bottom, you can see all this is crushed and gummy because, you know, these are gums. And this started from big chunks. And if you can hear the sound of it being crushed up, and this is with a spoon. And so this is what I did with a butter knife, but it's actually better with a spoon. And then I had a one ounce that someone actually purchased from me. So I'm going to just try my best not to spill into this little stuff. Let's try this one, see if it's okay, if it's better. All right, so, and I'm spilling some as I did. And you just got to be careful because as you can see, I overdid it there. So, and I'll be a sweet smelling aroma. And I'm spilling a lot here because I'm showing you guys, but there we go. So you yourself could do this. And you know what? The better thing is, and so the next time that I do it, I'll do it that way and it's to put it in a glass measuring um, cup and then transfer it because I don't want to miss any more so that's what I'm going to do but I wanted you to see what the process looks like and I'll show you what it looks like when I have nothing in the jar except for the leftover resin so now you see this is why staying to the end is important because now you're getting 
all these extra tips that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't. So you can see a lot of it even is still in this jar. Let's see, don't wanna, let's get it in the frame where it's all dissolved, which is good because it's extracted. That means you've extracted what you need out of it. And I want to show you that I can break up these pieces here. It's a little harder to do in a strainer. But you can see I started off with big chunks. So what I've actually done. Oh. All right. So what you can see is I do have it broken down considerably. And what I do, I've done is, and I'm definitely going to do again, is I'm going to do another one of these. I'm going to do this again. And put it in there and then they will be totally all like this all just like a gum and totally dissolved so I'm gonna do this again and that's how you can make sure you're getting the most out of your product and you're not wasting anything so I'm gonna use the same jar again so I just have to clean off the sides and clean up this table but it smells good Take some of that out. Okay. So I'll have to clean up this jar as well. But it's a really nice oil. And I started off with grapeseed oil. But it, it looks um, like it's even taken on more of the hue of the frankincense. So pretty nice. So that's the process. And also the other tip is to reuse this. So I'm gonna put it, in. good thing I closed that jar. So I'm gonna put it back in here and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna get, and the second time it smells just as good. And so I'd always just use that second part, you know, just for myself or for friends or whatever. Um, but you give the, the first batch, you know, the strongest batch. Maybe you even label it of which batch it is. So that's the process. This is the oil. And I do believe it looks a lot more yellow now from getting the different hue from the frankincense. And so you're able to go from these huge chunks down to this. And you can break it up further. Some pieces are a little bit more stubborn. But you can break up a lot of them even more when you have this glass to work against. But you just wanna be careful with metal that you don't scratch the jars. So we're gonna infuse this again and get even more out of it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out the other videos down below so you know what are the benefits of using these different oils and where you can find them.